for our next news special report. And this explosive special report will take you inside the courtroom fiery drama as Donald Trump faces off against a rigged justice system. So brace yourselves for shocking revelations from Representative Dan Mauser and legal expert Mark Levin to expose the depths of this political persecution. As America teeters on the brink, we'll uncover the alarming truth behind the sham trial that threatens the very fabric of our Constitution. Stay tuned for a powerful final thought that will leave you questioning everything. Now, folks, just as Donald Trump stands against a rigged system, we at Next News Network, well, we're fighting our own battle. YouTube has demonetized us, threatening our ability to bring you the truth. But like Trump, we refuse to back down. We need your support to keep this beacon of truth alive. Just as Trump fights for the Constitution, we fight for the right to report the facts. Stand with us in this critical moment by donating using the links below. Together, we can ensure that truth prevails no matter the opposition we face. Your action today decides our fate. Now, in a stunning display of defiance, Donald Trump took to the podium outside of the courtroom before entering it, delivering a scathing rebuke of the legal proceedings against him. His words echo the sentiments of millions of Americans who see this trial as nothing more than a political witch hunt. Take a look. Well, thank you very much. Just to begin, uh, so the news of inflation, is it really is rampant. Uh, it's moving at a level like people have not seen. They don't seem to be able to cut it down. Uh, Biden has no control over what's happening. He uh, started it with energy, and now it's uh, taking on a life of its own. It's very sad. We'll get it fixed. Uh, I'd like to be out campaigning right now, but again, I'm going to be in there almost five weeks in court. Uh, they have no case. And there's no crime. Uh, every single legal expert, and I can say this again and again, and Every time they come out, maybe at some point they'll come out and say, oh, we found something. But every single legal expert, Andy McCarthy, Jonathan Turley, uh, Mark Levin, everyone, Greg Jarrett, these are great talents. These are very, actually very brilliant guys, and they're not necessarily on my side historically over the years. Uh, but they're very talented people. They're legal scholars, highly respected. Every single person is saying there's no crime. There's no crime. It's a kangaroo court. There's never been anything like this that I've ever seen. Now, I have two other trials that were kangaroo courts also. It's stacked up. And hopefully, appellate division will take care of those things because they're, you know, they're egregious. And the problem is that New York is really on trial itself. The whole world is watching. They're seeing what's happening. And you can't use conflicted judges. This is a conflicted judge, highly conflicted judge. And you just can't do that. You just cannot allow that to happen because you ruined the whole system. The whole system comes tumbling down. And New York, look, I love New York. This is where I grew up. I was born here. I grew up here. And I, I see what's happening with this judicial system. And it's just, they call it all kangaroos. And we just can't have it. And I think the appellate courts can take care of a lot of things. But this one shouldn't even get to an appellate court. This should be an easy ruling. And it should really be, and I think it would be great for Judge Marshawn uh, to rule from the bench and to terminate this witch hunt. And it needs it. It really needs, it needs decisiveness. Every single scholar says there's been no crime, he's done nothing wrong. And I'm fighting for 300 billion people. I mean, I have no choice. It's not that I like doing this, sitting in an icebox all day for seven, eight, nine hours. Uh, and it's a very cold room, I will tell you that. But I'm doing this because our country needs it. Our Constitution's under threat. Our country needs it. So here I am. I will be doing something in the morning and then probably coming back in the afternoon. And we'll be resting pretty quickly. Resting meaning resting the case. I, I won't be resting. I don't rest. I'd like to rest sometimes, but I don't get to rest. But we are, uh, we have a phenomenal case. We've won the case by any standard. Any other judge who would have thrown this case out, any other judge would have thrown this case out. And I think that Juan Murchard would do himself and do the state and the city a great service by doing what everybody knows should be done. And so we're going to go in, we'll have another little scrum in a little while, perhaps. It should end a little bit early today. We, we appreciate you suffering with us. Look, you've been weird with us for five weeks. And you see it. The crowd's outside. We can't get... It's not a very big thing for us. We don't really care that much. But people want to get out there, and you have all police. 
The only people that are let out there is the radical left lunatics. And they put our people four or five blocks away. There are a lot of them, too. But I say uh, that doesn't matter. What matters is what's going on in this courthouse. So thank you very much. We'll be back a little bit later. Thank you. Trump's fiery speech exposed the glaring inconsistencies and biases within the justice system as he declared our Constitution is under threat. He highlighted the lack of any actual crime and the presence of a highly conflicted judge painting a picture of a kangaroo court determined to undermine the very foundations of American justice. And Trump's words serve as a rallying cry for those who believe in due process and equal treatment under the law. He emphasized the importance of his fight, not just for himself, but for the 300 million Americans whose rights are at stake. The former president's unwavering stance in the face of adversity is a testament to his commitment to defending the principles that have made America great. Echoing Trump's sentiments, Representative Dan Mauser offered a scathing assessment of the New York case during an appearance on Fox News. Take a look. We're expecting a little bit more of, of a circus, I guess, right? I mean, what was went on yesterday was, uh, in fact, that's an insult to some clowns. Uh, I mean, Cohen just proved to be, along with being a liar and being guilty of tax fraud and bank fraud, uh, he's, he's also a thief, uh, he, he admits, stealing uh, tens of thousands of dollars. Um, look, this, this whole trial is uh, just really sad, if you really, really get down to it. I mean, talk about undermining democracy. They love talking about how uh, they're all for democracy. I don't think there's anything more than weaponizing our court systems and having a presidential candidate accused of all kinds of frivolous crimes. By the way, what is the crime he's actually accused of? Is it, is it uh, fraudulent campaign donation? Is it record keeping? I mean, you know, they're asking for dismissal because they, they really have not yet defined the crime. And then let's look at the players, Maria. I mean, come on. The judge donates to, to Joe Biden. His daughter's a big player that used to work for Kamala Harris. Bragg ran on when he, for district attorney getting Trump. And his largest donor is George Soros. I mean, this is, this is, I mean, if you write this down and put this on paper, you see that this is, um, this is a, a kangaroo court situation and a, a real, a real undermining of democracy and uh, just outrageous. Fortunately, the well, American I people mean, have seen it. That now, he pulled no punches comparing the trial to a circus and stating that it's an insult to clowns. He exposed the glaring conflicts of interest among the key players in the case from the judge's political donations to Bragg's campaign promises to target Trump. In his words, paint a disturbing picture of a justice system hijacked by political agendas where the pursuit of truth takes a backseat to partisan vendettas. The congressman's remarks underscore a growing concern among Americans that the very institutions meant to protect their rights are being weaponized against political opponents. His call for a fair and impartial judicial process resonates with those who believe that no one, not even a former president, should be subjected to a rigged system. And in a shocking revelation, legal expert Mark Levin, appearing on Sean Hannity's Fox News program, dropped a bombshell that could have far-reaching implications for the prosecution. Listen to this. What underlying crime did Donald Trump commit? He didn't commit any underlying crime, and he wasn't charged with any underlying crime. He wasn't charged with federal election violations, even though that's not the jurisdiction of the DA. There's nothing here, but I want to get into something here. Donald Trump is a historic figure, or they wouldn't be doing this. They wouldn't be doing this. There wouldn't have been a January 6th committee. There wouldn't have been a Mueller criminal investigation. There wouldn't have been two phony impeachments. Listen to this, America. There wouldn't have been a warrant, which is inexcusable, an unconstitutional warrant, in my view. An FBI SWAT team sent to his home. There have been, in the course of the last few months, five grand juries controlled by Democrats. Over what? You would have thought this man took money from the communist Chinese. You would have thought his son took money from the communist Chinese. You would have thought he's the criminal of the century. What exactly did he do? So they have to concoct all these phony crimes because he didn't do anything. So the Manhattan DA should be disbarred, not only because of the way he campaigned, because you know what? This is crap that a pre-law student shouldn't even put in front of a damn judge. He asserted that D.A. Alvin Bragg may have violated the federal Brady rule by failing to provide Trump's attorneys with exculpatory evidence regarding the unreliability of their star witness, Michael Cohen. This misstep could potentially lead to Bragg's disbarment, casting further doubt over the integrity of the entire proceeding. Levin's analysis exposes the depths of the corruption within the system where prosecutors are willing to bend the rules and withhold critical information to secure a conviction at any cost. 
His revelations underscore the importance of holding those in power accountable for their actions and ensuring that the rights of the accused are protected. Now, the common thread that runs through the remarks of Trump and Mauser and Levin is the urgent need to restore the integrity of our judicial system. When political motivations trump the pursuit of justice, the very foundation of our republic is at risk. The sham trial against Donald Trump is not an isolated incident, but rather a system, a symptom of a deeper rot within our institutions. If you got value from this report, tap subscribe. It's time for my final thought. America, the stakes couldn't be higher. As Trump, Mauser, and Levin have made clear, this sham trial isn't just an attack on one man, it is an assault on the very principles that define our republic. The corruption and political persecution on display threaten the integrity of our entire justice system. The solution is clear. We must stand united behind Trump and fight to restore him to the White House in 2024. Only then can we root out the rot and reclaim our nation from those who seek to destroy it. The future of America hangs in the balance. Congratulations, you made it to the end of the video. Now keep up your quest for truth with this next news report. And if you found our channel enlightening, join the millions who agree with you. Tap subscribe. Thank you for watching the Next News Network.